at it again, baby, and we have another one with Larry Elder. Let's dive in. Recently, the head of the Black Lives Matter chapter in New York, his name is Hawk Newsom, made an assertion. He said, poverty causes crime. And the problem is, is that crime is caused by poverty. <laughs> what? You can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious. In my first book, The 10 Things You Can't Say in America, I talked about crime. You know, in 1960s, the area of California that had the greatest amount of crime was an area that had the lowest income, the highest unemployment rate, the highest proportion of families with incomes under $4,000 a year, the least educational attainment, the highest tuberculosis rate, and the highest proportion of substandard housing. You know what area that was in California? It was right outside San Francisco called Chinatown. Yet in the entire penal system of the whole state of California, there were five people of Chinese ancestry behind bars. I repeat, five people of Chinese ancestry behind bars. If poverty causes crime, it should have been full of Chinese Americans. And there are many more problems with Mr. Newsom's assertion. Take the 30s during the Great Depression, or the 40s, or the 50s, when black poverty was high and discrimination against blacks was high. In 1940, 87% of blacks lived below the federally defined level of poverty. Yet in the 1930s, black homicide went down. The 1940s, black homicide went down. 1950s, black homicide went down. You know when it increased about 89%? The 1960s, when Lyndon Johnson, with the best of intentions, launched what he called the War on Poverty. Suddenly, the percentage of black kids being born into the world without a father married to the mother skyrocketed. And as I've said many times before, don't take Elder's word for it, take Barack Obama's word for it. One of the statistics that children who grow up without a father are five times more likely to live in poverty and commit crime. They're nine times more likely to drop out of school, 20 times more likely to end up in prison. Mr. Newsom ought to be asking. One thing that I, I would like to know is why that isn't addressed more in the mainstream media. You know, with all of these mass tragedies that have happened recently and rest in peace to all of those lost souls, why isn't that brought up more? Because I forgot who brought it up. I it, it might have been a Larry Elder video. Um, I don't I don't remember exactly who it was, but somebody brought up the fact that most of these individuals who commit these mass tragedies grew up without a dad being in the home. So there's a correlation there. As a matter of fact, I want to say the the statistic was all of them except for one. But that's never talked about in the media, and I'm just wondering why. Why is that not being addressed? I mean, clearly there's a connection there on some sort of level. It may not be the only reason, but there's a connection there. Let me know in the comment section. I mean, I, I have an idea, but even that, I mean, it's just like, I understand like you want to get rid of all weapons, but actually maybe that is the only reason. Because if you gave people another excuse, then you might not get your ban on weapons. Hmm. What do y'all think? Let me know in the comment section. Let me know. This simple question. Why have we gone from having 25% of blacks born outside of wedlock in 1965 when Lyndon Johnson launched his war to 70% today? You cannot blame that on poverty. Here's another problem. The people who can least afford the crime are the very people that people like Hawk Newsom purports to care about. This is an article from the late great economist Walter Williams. It's called mm. Unappreciated Crime Costs. Crime imposes a hefty tax on the people who can least afford it. He's referring to the law-abiding residents of black neighborhoods. Because a lot of businesses don't go into the inner city because of crime, because of theft, residents bear the time and the cost of going outside their community to do the shopping. Quote, the true villains are the criminals who make some businesses unprofitable. By the way, he writes, these are equal opportunity criminals. They will victimize a black owned business just as they would victimize a white owned business. Remember some of the riots during the summers, the 
It's gonna Mostly say that. peaceful, riots, victimizing black businesses. Owner Adrian Alvarez and her husband compelled to come to their Orange Theory Fitness franchise in the early hours of Sunday morning. We weren't necessarily trying to defend the business, but we wanted to go clean up. We wanted to let people know we were in support. When I got the phone call to come over here, like... That was Shoe Mountain's owner, Kareef Johnston's reaction to this. They broke down all, like I said, our, our gate that we had. This front door glass was smashed. There was glass all over this floor. It was just something hard to bear. <laughs> The next morning was when I came in, um, and that's when I saw the damage. I just energetically felt the hurt. The rioting and looting in late May took another major hit, and their store in Michigan was one of the many vandalized. It's just been like a domino effect, one thing after the next, after the next. Ronald Reagan saw it 40 years ago, massive inflation that we haven't seen since today. In his own words, Inflation is as violent as a mugger, as frightening. Before, before we get too deep into that, nobody cared. Nobody cared. I don't care who owns this. I'm just taking it. You saw it there, and, and, and I've seen other videos, um, you know, of, of black owned, you know, black business owners who were just furious, sad. I mean, just, just going through a, a, a range of emotions because their businesses are destroyed, and yet, it was their very own that did it. It wasn't the big, bad, boogeyman, white man. It wasn't old Trump, you know. It, was, it wasn't Trump that came in and took it. It wasn't the horrible, terrible, no good, very bad white people that came in and did it. It was their very neighbors. <sighs> Crazy, ain't it? He is an armed robber and as deadly as a hitman. Walter Williams continues. In low crime areas, FedEx, UPS, and other delivery companies routinely leave packages containing valuable merchandise on the doorstep if nobody's home. That saves the expense of redelivery and saves recipients the expense of having to go and pick up the packages. However, in high crime neighborhoods, delivery companies leaving packages at the door or supermarkets leaving goods outside unattended would be equivalent, he writes, to economic suicide. Fearing robberies, taxi drivers, including black drivers, often refuse to accept telephone calls for home pickups and frequently pass prospective black customers who hail them on the street. Again, black cabbies, and I've talked to them in New York, often will not pick up black would-be riders because they fear crime and they fear going to a neighborhood where they can't get a, fi a fare back to the area where they first were. So for all these reasons, a lot of black cabbies are not picking up prospective black customers. Nothing to do with racism and nothing to do with poverty. Walter Williams also writes about another unappreciated cost of crime, and that's home values. Homes where there's a lot of crime will appreciate less rapidly than homes where there's no crime or uh -huh. will even face depreciation. And then when there's people moving in, middle class and upper class moving in, you have people like Spike Lee condemning this. It's called gentrification. Never mind, it means more amenities, more stores, and more cops. I like what he said there at the end. They deem it as something that is super terrible, and yet it means more stores, it means more more businesses, because, I mean, it's simple. As If, if, if you're a business owner, you're going to want income. You're not going to put your stores in a low-income area, especially if that low-income area has high crime. That just doesn't make any sense. But if people with higher incomes start moving in, you're going to bring your business right to them. You're going to take your business where the money is. It's, it's, it's literally that simple. And I want, I want to say we checked out that video with him saying that. And yeah, it, it's totally bogus. I mean, it has nothing to do with race. It's everything to do with them dollar bills, y'all. Them dollar bills. As a business, as, as a business owner, you, you got to make money. You got, you got bills to pay too. So... Yes, that's simple. But um, Larry Elder is always providing the facts of the situation. I'm surprised that he had a piece of paper with him today. That was that was surprising to see. Normally, he just has the statistics just right off the top of the head. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed by how many, you know, statistics and facts he can remember because I've, I've never seen him hold a piece of paper there. But um, it was a black leader, a lecture on crime and poverty. But y'all let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. Like share comment and of course 
hit that subscribe button before you go. Peace and love. I'm out.